up, we have Flavio. Flavio is going to talk to us about airlines, APIs, and digital transformation. Wait, what is an airline again? It's been a weird year. Oh, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> so please, we're really excited for your conversation and go take it away, Flavio. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jennifer. Hello, everyone. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, picking on what Jennifer was saying, it's a bit weird to present behind the computer screen. Uh, airlines have been making the world smaller and helping us exactly doing this live and meeting people and sharing ideas. Uh, so my name is Flavio Geraldo. I'm an APA manager in Lufthansa. And today I will be speaking a little bit about where we come from and uh, why we are doing this <clears throat> API thing and where we want to go. So as I said, the airline industry is well, it has come a long way, almost 100 years, more or less. And obviously back then there were no computers to automate processes. Uh, so everything was done manually. Everything was quite heavy. And uh, especially airlines are by definition, a global uh, enterprise, a global environment. So we have to operate in multiple air, um, airplane, uh, <laughs> uh, in multiple places in different agencies everywhere, in airports, in uh, everything. And communication is very difficult, especially without having the, the, the IT, all the stuff that we have today. Uh, but still, airlines were very quick at adopting these technologies. We can see a picture here that I found. Even in the, in the 50s, we already were using some technology. And actually, I believe it was in the 60s, uh, GDS appeared. Uh, GDS are global distribution systems. And these were companies that were created exactly to manage this, uh, this communication. Uh, so IT was very early uh, in, in, the, in the industry, in the business, uh, but it was a, a cost, a very big cost, but a necessary one. Of course, the world changes, time passes, and the digital becomes more and more present and customers demand more and more from all of us. So again, very early, a kind of digital transformation started happening, but it was very much transforming physical objects into virtual objects. The e-ticket that you have in your phone today, the e-bag, uh, all the virtual entities that we have created are basically digital versions of the physical objects that already existed before. Uh, so they have the same constraints, the same boundaries, especially they follow the same processes, right? So IT kind of became more uh, existing, but uh, it was still very much a cost, right? So until recently, in the last few years, IT became more part of the experience, uh, became more everywhere, basically. Uh, so we have to become closer to the, to the business, but, uh, now we have other challenges because business wants us to have the, to be there, but what, what can we do? We have built this huge legacy in the past 50 years. Edifact, RPC, SOAP, whatever protocols you can imagine, they exist. They are there somewhere. Uh, all the systems are still designed in this classical way, big monoliths, uh, big, big stuff but we have to be faster, right? As I mentioned, we are closer to the business. Uh, customs wants uh, demand more things. We want to offer more enriching experience, more personalizations, but we struggle a lot to do it. Uh, so what are the challenges that we, we have in the end? I already, I already mentioned a little bit, process digitalization. The processes are still the same for the past 100 years, more or less. We still have to do check-in. Do you know why you're doing the check-in as a customer? I would guess probably not, but you do it kind of in an automated way, right? You know, 24 hours before the flight, you have to pick your phone and go there and say, yes, I will actually be in the flight, even if I already paid for the ticket three months ago. Uh, so processes is a thing that we need to, to still review. This global environment that we operated from the beginning, it, ended up creating natural silos. As I said, communication between airports in Argentina and in Germany was not easy. 
So if you optimize locally, hopefully you might have a kind of optimal end-to-end -end system. It's probably not entirely true, but it's what could be done in the way or at the time. But the silos ended up being created. So we still have them and we need to figure out a way how to, how to overcome that. Of course, evolution in time, new partners. We are, I'm talking about Google, Skyscanner, this kind of digital native uh, enterprises that exist nowadays. They are very fast and we need to connect to them uh, and we need them to connect to us. And we are not able to, to op work at the same speed. So we need to find ways to, to go around that. We need to, to be able to be as fast as they are. And thinking about the customers, uh, we need to bring back the customers and end the experience. What do I mean with this? Uh, in the old days, the experience was more or less starting when you enter the plane, leaving when you leave the plane. Nowadays, this is not the case. The experience, very correctly, is every moment the customer interacts uh, with us or has some kind of awareness of the brand. I mentioned before the GDS, Global Distribution System. They started uh, as a way to enable the communication between the different areas of, of the company and across the industry also. But they ended up creating or growing much, much more than that. They, they are basically, imagine a bookstore which sells books from a publisher. That's what they are for us. They sell the tickets and the flights, making sure that the same ticket is not sold in Madrid or in Helsinki uh, to different customers. Uh, so they, they took over the, the inventory of flights, uh, which is, is good because, I mean, it's a symbiotic connection between airlines and this GTS but it's also a bit taking us the customer a bit, little bit away from us and we need to, to regain that somehow. Uh, again, customer expectations. Uh, customers nowadays don't want to be 30 minutes in a phone line waiting to be answered for whatever happened. We have different channels, chatbots, Alexas, mobile phones, everything. And this, first of all, needs to connect, needs to use the old systems that we still have around, right? So we need to find ways to, to use this, to, to have these new channels available. Uh, and mainly we need to make sure that the information is coherent. It, it would not be good if you see that your, your flight is 30 minutes delayed on your uh, Alexa at home. And then when you arrive to the airport, the flight is already gone because your mobile phone has a different information, right? Something like that ability to react fast. Also a challenge we have a little bit connected with the processes. The world changes and things happen. Uh, sometimes a volcano explodes in Iceland or who knows, maybe a virus can take over the world and we, we don't know how long it will take. So we need to be able to react very fast to, to these situations. And, and sometimes again, it's not so, so easy. And last but not least, I mean, it's not last, but last from this list, sustainability, of course, it's something that every industry, every company needs to be aware. And uh, we, we, it's also an important topic for us. So we have these challenges. Now, what do we need to do, right? We sit down and thought, okay, what's, what, what is our, our ideas for this? First of all, and insisting a lot on, on this topic, process digitalization. Uh, we have to review the process. I mean, it's, it's not easy because airlines are a highly regulated uh, industry, uh, but even internally, there's a lot that can be reviewed and improved, uh, get rid of processes that are not required anymore, uh, automate everything that is possible and have maybe APIs uh, above that, right? So th think how, how we can turn the business capabilities that we have today into digital capabilities that can be reused and uh, exchanged internally in the, in the company, which brings me to the next step, discoverability. There's no point in having amazing functionalities if people cannot use them. So obviously we need to enable parts of the company to discover what the rest of the company is doing. And obviously use it, 
right? And it needs to be easy, it needs to be fast, it needs to be understandable. And still thinking about the silos topic that I mentioned a little bit earlier, the usability needs to be faster and cheaper than uh, building it from scratch. Because if not, costs are very relevant. And if it's cheaper to do it, probably we'll end up redoing it. And last but not least, adaptability. As I mentioned, something can happen. The requirements of the customer changes. The world evolves things, the, the needs of whoever changes. Uh, so we, we need to be able to adapt. We need to be able to adapt the processes, the interfaces, the, the capabilities that, that we have. All of this with a very, very clear, strict customer focus. The idea is always to bring the best value to the customer. Okay, so we, we know the challenges. We think we know what we need to do how do we do it, right? So this is what the team where I'm in uh, sit down and thought, so APIs, right? I mean, this is an API conference, that's not a big surprise. Um, so API management is for us at least part of the solution. Uh, REST, yes, REST APIs, but that's mainly technology. Uh, as I said, SOAP is there, RPC is there, everything will continue to be there. Uh, and we are not very strict about it, but yeah, if possible, maybe we can start moving to, to some other, uh, another protocol. Uh, but mainly what we want is to, or what we think is a good idea is to build an ecosystem inside a company, right? So change the people's mind for, to change from these business capabilities to the digital capabilities and build an ecosystem out of it that can be reused in terms of data and functionalities so that the organization can leverage on its own capabilities that it has built. So how to achieve it? Well, first of all, being very annoying and going around and talking to people and telling them that things are changing. Uh, so first approach, again, services are there, interfaces are there, they are there since the 70s, 60s, whenever. Uh, but the idea is, stop doing it in the same way as you have been doing for the last few years. Don't expose your database. Don't build whatever internally and then just put an API or a system to system interface on top. Start from the API, right? Start from the API, think about who is going to use it, what kind of capabilities you want to provide, uh, what, what kind of information is needed, uh, and then, design or develop the, the, the backend systems, right? So what we started by going around and talking to people is about API products and API first, right? And then man manage your API, your interface as it, a product. You need to think about evolution. You need to think about uh, decommissioning. You need to think about all, all of that. But people were looking at us and saying, okay, but how do I do it, right? I mean, of course, we were supporting them. We were helping everywhere we, we could or we can. Um, but we started also doing some guidelines. Right? So we cannot be everywhere at the same place. So we started uh, doing these guidelines from use Kevab case instead of Pascal case or use this or manage parameters in that way or headers like this or that until what is the thought process that you can follow to do a proper API, whatever proper might mean, All right? So think about the customer, think about the data model, think about the functionalities that are required and think about standards. That's also something that we are trying to, to support. Uh, of course, REST already mentioned, OAuth for authentication and authorization, but also we are working very close with YATA so International Air Travel Association, uh, which has all the, or many uh, companies that work in the airline industry. And they are trying also to define uh, standards for the industry. So we work very close together with them. We bring to YATA our struggles and our ideas, try to turn them into standards. And then we can also leverage on that uh, when we have internal discussions, because if YATA is recommended to do something, probably it's good. So it's something that we can also use as support. But again, th this is all very theoretical, very, very nice, but not 
sometimes not helping real, the, the real life of our colleagues. So we also have to do something, really, really do. So we came up with this marketplace, which as you all can guess, it has a gateway uh, connecting clients to backends. And here, what's our main idea is, is to decouple both sides, right? And go especially to the, to the service creators and say, guys, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about authentication, about capacity, about access, about anything. You focus on your business because that is what you are good at doing. Everything else we take care of. Also with the clients, you don't have to worry who the backend is. You don't have to worry about permissions or anything. You just, you have this API which does this. You focus on your business and you be the best at it that you can be. And we take care of everything else. Uh, also next to that, so this is about connecting the applications obviously, but we also want to connect people. I, mentioned, I started by saying we want to build an ecosystem and an ecosystem, a community needs to have people. So we have this developer portal, which is not the public developer portal. We also have one of those, which is amazing. You should go there, try it, let us know what you think. Uh, but this is more an internal one where we have the full catalog of all the interfaces, APIs, FTPs, uh, queues, everything that we have so that people can communicate. They can look for what is existing and, and, and share and use and participate in this community to build something, something better. Last, again, but not least, the self-service. Uh, it's a self-service API that we have built for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, because we think we should eat our own dog food. So if we are going around and talking about API products and guidelines and standards, we should also build it ourselves. That also helps us understanding the problems that our colleagues have. Uh, but also this is, so as I mentioned, APIs, which are mainly focused for the providers of services, and they can use this to integrate in their CI CD pipeline, right? So they can basically manage the full life cycle of the APIs uh, through, or their APIs through our API, right? So that, that's something that is helpful for, for them. Uh, so we have built this, we have this working, we have all the problems solved, so everything must be, must be good, right? So no, of course not, because it doesn't matter if we have a tool, uh, if people are not using it, if people still have concerns, and in airlines, uh, it's something that is very important is safety and security, and that usually comes with control. And when you put an API out there, you're losing control. When you're using someone else's API, you're losing control. So there's still some, we still need to get this going a bit more, right? So it's going, it's evolving. We have a lot of good feedback, uh, but it's still a way that, that we need to, to go. It's still a path that we need to, to go through. But still, we have some good stories, and let me share that with you. Uh, for example, Flight Status API. Uh, this one is actually in our public developer portal. So again, go there, have fun, and let us know what you think. Uh, this is a very simple, very easy to use API, which first of all, it's used across all the channels uh, in, the, in the entire group. <laughs> so Lufthansa is a, a group of airlines. Russell's Airlines, Austria, Swiss. Of course, Lufthansa airline itself uh, also use this API. So everywhere where you see the status of a flight, if it's when it's going to arrive, which, are, which is the gate, all of that, it's coming from this API. And it's also used outside. Flightstat is a company that uh, manages uh, flight information. So they provide statistics and tracking and, uh, and they're using this, uh, this API with uh, well, they're very happy about it. A couple more stories, crew apps. Uh, so we have some colleagues, uh, mainly pilots, who like to develop some code. And they, 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 they learned that some APIs existed that could help them. They have always the struggle 
how long am I going to be uh, in a certain city between flights? Wh when is my next flight? Uh, so to manage all of this, a few colleagues have simply decided they would do it themselves. So they did, they got access to, to the APIs, they built their applications, and actually they even put applications in the App Store. Uh, so that seems to be very successful. And another one, biometrics. So this was a, a project that was done with, um, with Star Alliance. Uh, it's basically about going through the airports uh, without touching anything. Right? So you, you have some cameras that identify you and you can just go through the, the entire process. Um, so there are several things that happen here. First of all, again, safety and security. The API is fully GDPR compliant. So the information of the customers is only sh shared with whoever the customers have accepted explicitly and while they allow it. So if they go and cancel problem, problem solved, there is not shared anymore. Uh, but th this was done in a record time, right? So with the tools, with the standards we have uh, around it, uh, we managed to do in a few weeks, something that before used to take a few months at least. Uh, and also in terms of speed, the Star Alliance colleagues, when they came to us, they were expecting, okay, this is going to take forever. The API is going to look horrible. We're not going to understand anything. No, it was actually very quick, very easy to, to understand. And in fact, we ended up being the, the first ones to, to get it working with Star Alliance. So another interesting success story. And I think that's it. So sure. here is the, the URL for the portal. Uh, again, go there, have fun, and let us know what you think. And if you want to get in contact, you also have a few, uh, a bit of information there. Jennifer. <laughs> Obviously, we want to know what's the API to use to get automatic upgrades to first class. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure you get that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we have one, and I'm sure we can find an agreement. <laughs> Jennifer Riggins, Jennifer K. Riggins, no. Um, <laughs> we have a clarification from the audience. Uh, what yeah. do you mean when you talk about taking some power back from the global distribution systems? Uh, well, it, it's really about getting a customer, right? I mean, it's not about telling them to go away. As I said, it's a very symbiotic uh, relationship we have with them. So we are working very close together. Uh, it's, it's I hope it's as good for them as it is for us. Um, but we do have this challenge. We need to understand when the customers are trying to reach to us. And, and it's not an easy solution. And we have actually to work together uh, because if not, it's going to be bad for, for one of the sides. And that's obviously not what we want. Okay. And something I was just thinking of, and I feel like the crew apps was a particularly interesting use case because when you first started talking about how the airline industry sometimes struggles with technology and you think of, I just saw the new Apollo 11 and you think of the airline industry as the impetus for the technology, modern technology industry. But when you think about it, eh, you know, it's about more the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s wartime effort is what accelerated um, the airline industry, but then I was thinking about, obviously it was a software problem that was the 737 and more than anything, a communication problem than a software problem. So with the Boeing 737 Max, what I was thinking of um, is I thought your community database sounded very interesting, but also I was thinking that's, people have to go looking for that. It's kind of like a library. So how do you push notifications to different teams, especially teams that, dare I say, uh, flight attendants, pilots may be very good at their technology area, but they may not have this overall or may have never heard of an API. So how do you over communicate things like that? Uh, in, in, what do you mean in terms of what we can do with APIs? Or? With the Boeing 737 Max, a lot of things happen, but one of the failures uh, with those tragedies was an inability. They did not communicate properly with the non-technical people, which I'm not blaming the software side. It was clearly a company-wide problem, but 
there was this issue of communication. So how are you pushing using APIs to push communication out to different teams? I thought the crew apps was a really interesting example. So I think uh, APIs are powerful to play in there. Well, f first of all, let me, I have to say 737 was not us. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I the software industry yeah. and uh, that's what you think of. No, but, like. I mean, of, of course, of course there are internal communication teams, right? And I mean, I'm probably not the best one to talk about that, um, but uh, we do have I mean, in talking about APIs and maybe stepping a little bit away from that uh, case, I, I mentioned REST, right? But uh, it's not like everything we have is REST. It's actually, REST is only a very small part. We also have uh, asynchronous APIs. We also have uh, queuing systems. Uh, we also have uh, notification, push notification for mobile devices. So all of that can be used uh, quite efficiently to, for, to do some, that kind of communication. But then what goes inside the message, that's a full other department that needs to take care. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, it's just a very interesting thing that the power of APIs doesn't just digitalize a company and enables to break down these communication silos and these technological silos. Just like you said, like, I don't think as customers, we would in any way be okay if we showed up, we, we thought we were gonna make that flight and we didn't. So I think that was an excellent example. So thank you so very much, Flavio. And I look forward to continuing the conversation. And I'm sure your colleagues will thank too you. during yeah. the panel. And of course,